This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta at Indian School of Business in Hyderabad, where it seems everyone's been playing Kaun Barega Karodpati and winning. And if the winners have one person to thank for, it is one of the institute's founding fathers, its chairman now, Rajat Gupta of McKinsey, one of the first global CEOs of Indian origin. Rajat, welcome to Walk the Talk. Thank you. It's a lovely feeling to be here for you. I mean, it's lovely for me, but well, for you. Thank you very much for coming all the way here to yes. do this. I appreciate this and I always, whoever comes, I say, come to the campus and you get a feel yes. for it. Convocation day for the class of 2006. Right. It's our fifth graduating class. And I, I noticed you have four children, but in a way, all these are your children as well, isn't it? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. It's a really a great feeling to see uh, these 300 plus people graduate and all their families come and uh, how proud they are and it gives you a wonderful feeling. And, and this whole business of multi crore salaries, you know, where zero seem to matter, is it important? I, I think it, it, or is it creates... Is it hype? No, no, well, I think in some ways, of course, the idea is the, it reflects on the quality of the institution, the people it's attracting and the training it's giving. But at the same time, I think one of the things we want to make sure, like Ratan said today at the convocation, it's the standards, it's the values that you play with, not only, you know, how the marketplace values you. Right. And, uh, but uh, what is being valued? Is, is, is it brand ISB or brand India in some ways too? To which, I, in a way, you've contributed as well. I think all of it. You know, clearly uh, they recognize, and I would say that I am a graduate of IIT. Going back to institutions like IITs and IIMs, they really have contributed to brand India. And, you know, obviously ISB will in time do the same. And at the same time, all the things that is happening in the country today has contributed to that. And I'm delighted that there's such a vibrant you know, entrepreneurial spirit, there's a vibrant can-do attitude and great deal of confidence. To, to, that, to that, that extent, is multi-crore salaries do matter? Yes, and I think it helps, it helps attract further students. You know, it was, it's amazing that now our request for admissions keep going up every year, and I expect that next year it'll be another record number but of people. Before we move on, explain this sculpture to me, this, this boy on a buffalo. This, uh, it doesn't seem to be quite dressed like uh, an Indian village boy, nevertheless. You know, you would, you would think that in a business school, why would we have a buffalo and a boy? And this was the gift of our first dean, Pramat Sena. And he wanted to uh, kind of... He was of himself a corporate uh, leader. He of, was a, uh, himself a corporate leader. He was a partner yes. of mine in McKinsey. Yes, yes. And he chose this sculpture uh, because it's, uh, it's got this buffalo that is uh, sort of really embodies because, work. You know, you keep hearing about the... Chinese dragon, the Indian uh, elephant, yeah. the buffalo at business school, buffalo at B school. I think <laughs> there can be many variations on that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Interesting. Right. No, that's right. That's right. But uh, that takes us to the question of question that's asked all the time: this whole Bharat and India issue. You know, in fact, I looked at the boy on the buffalo and I thought about it. You know, there is ISB, there are IITs and IIMs, little islands of. Excellence. How do you reconcile all this with the larger reality of India? In fact, that's the problem that our political uh, class seems to have with institutions like these. Well, I think, you know, my own view is that in, in, in a fundamental way, you need, there are not either or questions. I am very much involved in primary education and primary health in the country. Right. You but I'm also... Your, uh, uh, public Health Foundation. Of right. So I'm, but at the same time, I'm also very much involved in higher education. IIT is uh, doing what we can do to improve and take the IITs to the next era. And also, like ISB, you know, my own feeling is that, you know, we make a mistake when we talk about either or. We have to work on all dimensions together. The country needs all of it. And my biggest regret in some ways is that, you know, take the IITs, right? In 50 years, IITs have barely doubled right. for a country that is aspires to grow at the pace we want to grow. For IITs to just barely double is, is you know, choking off opportunities for our right. young people. And for no reason. 
for no reason. There's no particular reason why we shouldn't be able is, to. Uh, Mom, I, I, th I think this is one of the worst kinds of self-denial that we are subjecting ourselves to in India, isn't it? I absolutely think, I mean, everybody talks about the hard infrastructure that, of the country that needs to get improved and so on. But the soft infrastructure needs equal amount of work. And in fact, in the long term, is far more critical. The health, health infrastructure, the educational infrastructure, both at the primary and at the higher education level. How many institutions of, say, the IIT's class does a country like India need? Or, to use an expression our politicians like, absorb? I don't know. I, I, think, I think easily ten times more. Hmm. So, I, you know... And, and those can be pretty much run on self-financing basis? I think so. I think so very much. You can, you can look at that. I mean, I, I look at ISB when we started it. Everybody said, this country can't afford it. I say this country can't afford not to. And within five years, we are pretty much self-sufficient, self-financing. And the most important thing about ISB is that it is needs blind admission. If somebody is qualified on merit, they will get admission, they will get scholarships, they'll get other kinds of financial aid, they'll be able to come to this institution. And in spite of that kind of assistance, we still make it very much a self-sufficient institution. Have you, uh, have you spoke, spoken to policymakers in India on this? Why this few IITs? Uh, I, I had another of your fellow IIT graduates, Raghuram Rajanov, yeah. IMF yeah. on the show, mm. saying India needs 50 IITs, and I simply can't understand why they don't invest. Yeah, I, I have been talking about this topic for about 10 years. I've uh, spent a lot of time, we did some work actually at McKinsey, trying to think through how do we scale up? Uh, I right now chair the uh, Pan IIT movement, and we have been basically saying this: How do we scale up? We've been saying, give us the mandate to create some more IITs, the alumni group, and we will go ahead and create these IITs of is standard. It, is anybody listening? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I think there is good intentions uh, and listening, but you know, it takes a lot of energy to get anything done done here. And, 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 and do you, are you greeted with suspicion sometimes? That this is our domain, who the hell are these guys, rich kids? May, maybe, but you know, throughout my life I've just ignored those suspicions. I mean, you know, if there are, it's, it's their problem, not mine. Hmm. So as long as I'm doing it with the right intentions, I'm okay. If somebody is suspicious, let them be suspicious. Uh, we started this public health initiative, right? Right. It took Initially, there was a lot of skepticism, and we said, fine, doesn't matter, we keep at it, and I think finally... You, I, you've, you've raised almost like 200 crores of rupees. Yes, 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 but that is not even the most important thing. I think what we've achieved there is something very unique. What we've achieved is a public-private partnership right. with the central government, the state government, the NGO community, the health community, the international academic community, the donor community, and the private sector, businesses, all in a partnership, all in sort of stacking hands together and saying, this is a problem we need to solve. This is unique. This is, doesn't happen that often. Now, uh, tell me, uh, Rajat, uh, in the course of your very interesting and very challenging career, when did this come to your head that I have to go back and do something in India. You know, it's very tough to keep on fighting your way up the up the ladder, particularly at McKinsey, which is so competitive. Was there an inflection point? Did something cause it to happen? No, you, you asked two quite different questions. One is, you know, when did I get involved in India and doing no, things uh, here? No, I'm asking you, when did you think of getting involved, getting in, India? involved in India? Right from the beginning.